Alright, let's do this. We'll play a Rat Mage. That'll be good. What's going on guys, Verabin here. I got an opportunity to play some 2v2 games with Zaryu this week, so these are those games. I think we played five or six games together, um, so obviously we didn't have comms or anything like that, so we're just going to kind of walk through those games and see what's going on. So he's already blasting this Warlock, as you can see. Uh, the Warlock popped his cooldown, his shield, um, the Demon Hunter is going to go ahead and banish me there, but this game's pretty much already in, in the bag. I stun the DH there and then just pop off on the Warlock, and he is going to be toast. All right, so now the next game is about a Feral and a Shadow Priest. This team could be kind of tough for us um, just because they have a lot of off healing and stuff. They have a lot of defensives, a lot of mobility, so um, so we're going to start in on the Feral here. Um, you can see I get silenced there, so I'm going to try to line a sight. I'm trying to stay close to Zaryu here. I'm trying not to bubble here, but I did end up bubbling. Um, so that's not great. Uh, this early on, I did have to do a really early bubble, but there's a lot of good pillars and stuff here, and uh, Mage, Arcane Mage has a lot of good peels for me, so um, so that's pretty cool there. I'd pop a Freedom on Zaryu there. Uh, you can see we're hitting the um, the Feral Druid pretty hard. I was uh, We actually split up there a little bit. I hit the Priest, but then I swap over to help him out with the Druid when I see the Druid's getting pretty low. Um, so we pop off on the Druid there and take him out. This next game is against a Disc Priest and a Balance Druid. I'm a little scared here just because of all the magic damage and the burst that Balance Druids can do. Um, you can see we're starting here on the Disc Priest waiting for the Balance Druid to come out. He does come out with a big Convoke. Um, I try to line a sight and save Bubble, but we end up having to spin Bubble very early. Obviously, this puts me way on the back foot here. Really, the only other magical def defense I have is my um, Shield of Vengeance. So I'm going to pop there a stun on the Druid. Try to get some pressure on the Druid. We make some decent progress on the Druid there. I probably should have um, should have human racialed out of that stun there, but anyway, um, we're pop trying to hit the druid here. He ends up doing a lot of damage to me, um, and then I have to run, and I end up dying. Close one, man. We almost had him. Game's not over yet. Twenty minutes later. All right, so I'm still dead. Zaryu's very busy up here soloing these two guys. Easy clap, chat. Easy clap. We'll take it. The 1v2. This next game is against a Mage Rogue. You can see I'm trying to hit the Mage a little bit just to stay in combat. I'm trying not to get uh, opened on by the Rogue. Trying not to get sapped. You can see I pop a Consecrate there. Trying to keep the uh, keep in combat but also uh, get the Rogue out. It does not work, so I'm going to freedom away. I'm going to do my best to play near these pillars so I can use Line of Sight to my advantage. I don't want to get polyed. And uh, right here, um, you can see I'm kind of keeping my distance. I'm letting Zaryu do a lot of the heavy lifting there, starting on the mage. And then the rogue opens on me. I'm going to go ahead and melee wall and trinket here. Uh, I probably did not need to use Shield of Vengeance, but I was a little scared, so I popped it as well. You can see the rogue just runs when he sees he gets my cooldowns. He just runs, so I'm going to heal there. I do get locked out on Holy, but it's okay. I'm just running right to the pillar towards the X, trying to stay close to Zaryu so you can help me. I stun up the rogue there. He sits it a little bit. You can see I'm trying to line aside the mage. I'm letting Zaryu do damage to the mage while he, um, well, well, the mage can't see me. Uh, you can see I get kidney there, and then the mage tries to come over and hit me, but I'm going to go back, right back around the pillar to uh, stay away from the mage so I don't get taken a whole lot of damage there. I still have bubble available, so I'm feeling okay. You can see we get a massive viz there. I'm trying to heal back to full. We're able to get the cauterize here and the ice block, so we're sitting really, really happy right now. Um, I'm going to go around the pillar towards Zaryu, but away from the mage, and we're able to go ahead and kill the rogue. Alright, next game here, we're against a Mistweaver Monk and a Fury Warrior. I'm pretty scared here against a Fury Warrior, but for whatever reason, he ends up just sticking to uh, Zaryu like glue. I don't know why. All he would have to do is literally just swap to me at any time, but he ends up just literally tunnel visioning. I'm not sure he hits me once. Um, so that makes my job very easy in this match. You can see the monk is CCing me. Uh, he's doing his best job to CC me. I get leg swept there and everything, but Zaryu's chilling, so I'm not doing anything. He's able to get the 
Um, the big Miss Weaver cooldown there, the Life Cocoon out of the way. So I'm just going to line aside. I'm expecting this warrior to switch to me at any time. So I'm playing very uh, far away from him, but he ends up really just literally training an Arcane Mage the whole time. He's going to have a hard time killing an Arcane Mage, but he's going to try his best. Um, so you can see there I am I'll pop freedom on Zaryu and then I do a little bit of damage to the warrior and then I'm going to jump down to force the warrior to come down towards us. I don't want to get isolated with the warrior. Top myself off with the flash of light there. Um, what I'm really trying to do in these games is really just stick with him as much as I can. Stay close to my uh, partner there because so he can peel for me and stuff like that. I see my fleshcraft is available so I re-up that shield so I can kind of stay alive. Um, you can see we got a Spear Bastion going on there, so that's a little bit of a scary cooldown. I get ropped away as well. I stun the stun the um, Miss Weaver there, th kind of thinking we're able to, we're going to be able to get a, a sheep there, but we did not. The warrior is pretty close to him, uh, so we go ahead and bop at that point. He blinks away. So we got a little bit of uh, breathing room there. I don't see where the warrior is shattering throw the bop for whatever reason. Um, so we're just kind of just laying into this warrior, doing as much damage as we can. Our uh, our Hodge is almost available, uh, so we're going to just keep popping damage, popping off, popping off until we can Hodge, but luckily uh, we're able to kill the warrior there. All right, in this next clip, we are fighting a Marksman Hunter and Resto Druid. You can see I've sped this clip up because it's longer than normal, but I want to show you how these guys are playing and kind of talk through what, what our strategy is when teams want to do this. I don't know why a healer and DPS comp would, would want to dampen like this. It seems like they want us to they want to play the game longer but it just makes their heals less effective and dampening starts very quickly uh, so we're we ju we're just kind of playing it safe we're doing damage to the hunter here a little bit we get the turtle uh, but then at that point uh where i just kind of run away trying to make sure i stay topped off i pop off on the druid a little bit to try to get some more cooldowns i don't really think i get many cooldowns there um, but I'm kind of trying to stay cognizant of where Zara is, what his health is looking like. He gets a little low, so I kind of run over and try to get close to him. You can see he gets the ice block there. He heals to full. I do pop him off a couple heals, but it wasn't really necessary at that point. So he healed up, but now they're just running, and they just they, they kind of leave us alone um, for a little bit. So I'm not sure what they're thinking there, so I'm just kind of jumping on my mount, sticking with him. Um, and there's not a whole lot of value for us running in at this point. I don't really see why we would want to... Um, just kind of push in right now because dampening only favors us so um, so we're just hanging out uh, waiting for our cooldowns to come up you can see we got a uh, our flesh craft is still uh, still up um, the hunter's pushing in a little bit so we do a little bit of damage to him um, we go to and hodge on the resto druid there but they're not really pushing in it's kind of interesting i'm not sure why they, they played this game like this but um, so you can see I'm just kind of trying to do some support heals here. I don't really feel that comfortable pushing in because um, I don't really know what they're doing right now. So he actually altered time there, and I wasn't sure where he was. So he altered all the way back and all that health back. So um, so I'm just trying to heal there. I'm trying to hang around on one of these pillars, so I don't want to get aim shot. Aim shot is really broken right now. Um, so it can do tons of damage. So I'm going to re-up my fleshcraft there, get back on my mount, and then go right back. And now they're resetting. So uh, I'm not sure why they, they played it like this. It's kind of odd. Um, and uh, if you listen to Zaryu's stream at this time, he's having the same question, like, what's going on here? Why are they playing like this? So um, so we're going to go ahead and pop wings here and try to get a little pressure on the Druid. Or, I'm sorry, on the Hunter. Use all our cooldowns. You can see Zaryu's kind of getting pumped here a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try to pop through a couple big heals on him there. Uh, go ahead and pop off a few flash of lights, keep him topped off. And now they are just resetting again. So, um, so we do this once again. We reset. We're hanging out. Um, the thing is that, obviously, when they reset, we reset too, right? All our cooldowns come back, so we're able to uh, kind of recover and, um, you know, get our get our fleshcraft back. And, um, you know, we have all the all of our cooldowns are available right now. I've still got Bop. I've still got, or I've got Bop in a few seconds. I've got uh, Shield. I've got Shield of uh, Vengeance, all that good stuff. So we're chilling right now. We're chilling. So we get a brand new fleshcraft again. I don't know what the fleshcraft count is right now. It's at least five or six, so... Um, at this point, um, we we are able to start to get a little bit of pressure on them. All right, at this point, I'm able to catch the druid out of form, so I popped off on him a little bit. I still have wings available. I didn't use it yet, but you can see that uh, Zars helped me out there. We're popping off. He, we did get the tranquility right there, um, so that's really good for us. We're able to get that out of the way. I've still got wings, so I've got stun coming up in 10 seconds, so I think we've got potentially have a kill window here. You can see uh, we're just kind of playing the pillar. I'm trying to stick close to him, but we're kind of doing a, uh, a two-pronged approach here. You can see um, I almost get Cyclone there, but I do not. I'm going to pop wings, pop off, off on this Druid, use Wake of Ashes there, trying to line of sight the Hunter. 
Um, again, the druid gets caught out of form, and then he is going to pay for that with his life. Yo, GG's for now. Yeah.